Hey everybody and welcome to a very special video. You may remember I did some Evolve coverage last week uh, and mentioned that I was away at an, an event at 2K Games. 2K was nice enough to invite me and a bunch of other YouTubers down there uh, to check out a few games. This is the second one that we checked out. This is Civilization Beyond Earth. Comes out in October and uh, they gave us not quite free reign. You know, with Evolve we pretty much got to jump in, play as much as we wanted, however we wanted. Uh, Civ had a few restrictions on it. We could only play, or Beyond Earth to be more specific, had a few restrictions on it. We could only play uh, the first 100 turns, but we got uh, four or five hours with it as well. Uh, so we got to do the first uh, 100 turns many, many times over. So this is going to be uh, some gameplay of the first 100 turns again. Same full disclosure from the Evolve video, 2K paid for all the flights and accommodations, the travel, etc, etc. It took us out for a reasonably priced Mexican lunch. I had the shrimp tacos, in case you want to check my receipts. In any case, Civilization Beyond Earth is more Civ, is the way that I would describe it. You're going to see it here uh, as we, we play more and more of it. Um, over the course of this, and I, I apologize I didn't really go too much into the Federation details or those the starting things that I set up with. Basically, there's multiple Federations in the game, much like uh, the way you would have multiple countries uh, in, or multiple empires, I guess, in uh, Civilization V, which I'll admit, you know, I am a person that's been a, a dedicated fan of the Civ franchise. Civ V, I love, but I probably only have about 40 or 50 hours in it total. It was an obsession for a while, but uh, definitely like Civ 2 and Civ 4, I invested hundreds and hundreds of hours into. So if I've got any of the mechanics wrong about uh, Civ V, then I apologize. This does seem super Civ V y. And I know a lot of people were thinking, like, Beyond Earth, oh, that's gonna be like, um, you know, Alpha Centauri or something like that. that. That hasn't been my impression in the time that I've spent so far. It really does feel like a sci-fi themed save. So let me commentate on what's going on here. I chose the African Federation as my race here. There's all sorts of various, you know, pseudo-fictional or, like, near-future um, political consortiums and stuff like that. You can choose from the United African Federation, Polystralia, this is the tech tree, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, the Franco-Iberian, you know, yada yada, and basically they all have different benefits the same way they might in Civ. Like, for example, the African Federation gets, um, plus one food per city when your cities are healthy. Health represented by the, um, green kind of like, yeah, I can't mouse over it right now, but it, at the top right of the screen you can see that green, like, EKG, basically. Um, so I found in my first city, you start with the city, and I've chosen, you know, some things to bring with me. I think I started with a free technology, because that's one of the options that you can choose for yourself. And I also, uh, have my scout looking around here, and they found a resource pod, and the resource pod gave me a sun catcher, which is an orbital unit, something that's new in Beyond Earth, as far as I know, um, that you can launch. And this can do various kind of stuff. It can clear out the kind of poison that you can sort of see in the environment surrounding you right now. Uh, I think this one gives me a little bit more energy over the, um over the tiles in which I put it. So we're going to be using, you know, in a very civvy fashion. Our first unit is a scout. It's a, a recon unit that we are going to use to explore. And as time goes on, other civilizations will touch down here. So at least the way the game played during the demo that we played is um, that it's not so much about, you know, discovering other civilizations and where they are on the map. You're the first one to get there, and then other civilizations show up and you have to deal with them. So in this one, we got some extra energy. Uh, as you might expect, you can use that energy to buy stuff the same way you might use gold in Civ. So you could buy a unit with that, or, you know, you could maintain a road with that, for example. I really can't stress enough how civ this feels, which I'm sure for some people is going to be perhaps a disappointment that it doesn't feel as revolutionary as maybe they'd be hoping for. Not to say that it doesn't have its own thing going for it, and for some people it's going to be super exciting because they're like, hey, more Civ in kind of like a new environment that uh, I had not, you know, previously conceived of for a while at least. So, I think in this game, this is the fourth or fifth game that I've played. Uh, we're still, like, searching these resource pods, seeing what we're getting. It looks like that one just gave me more energy. Um, and by this point, I've kind of gotten a feel for how the game works. So, I hope that I don't do too badly. I want to talk about the thing that excited me the most, actually, about playing Beyond Earth. And I did have a good time with it, you know, the same way that I have a good time when I play Civ as well. And this will probably suck me back in the same way that every iteration of Civ sucks me back in for a little while. Um... We, did, we won't see too much of the diplomacy, but I'll talk about that maybe if we get a little bit further. But one of the things that's coolest, and one of the things that I actually think does deviate it, or differentiate it from, um, you know, Civ Five, for example, is this kind of, like, native flora and fauna. You might be seeing these aliens kind of milling about right now. You know, this doesn't take place on Earth. We're going into a different planet because ours has become, for whatever reason, inhospitable. We, don't, we didn't see, like, an opening cutscene or anything like that. Uh, we just built a worker unit here that will start constructing a farm or something. Again, you know, you, you can pretty much tell what you're seeing if you've, uh, if you've played Civ before. But, um, yeah, so we're on this, this alien planet, and the aliens are really more dynamic than any AI, you know, apart from Civilization AI, that I've seen in a Civilization game before. 
it, the way I remember playing Civ 5 or Civ 4 or Civ 2 is that, you know, you come across barbarians, you just kind of, or, or like wild animals, you just kind of like get enough units to overpower them and then do it. This is a little bit more dynamic, and you'll see these aliens, that was a really big mistake that I made right there, I'll admit. Um, your workers just go down as soon as they get touched by another unit, so I'm a big old idiot. Um, but the aliens are kind of like, they don't know how to react to you. The way that they react to you is, to some extent, dependent on the way that you react to them. Pardon me as well, if my voice sounds a little bit hoarse, I've literally just gotten off the bus uh, coming back from PAX. So my voice might not be in the best condition that it's ever been in, but in any case, I'm... Excited to be bringing you this coverage nonetheless since the embargo pops tomorrow. But in any case, if you're aggressive to the aliens, they'll be more likely to be hostile to you in the future. And not just you, but all other human civilizations on the map that they come across. They kind of have, as far as I understand at least, a little bit of a hive mind. So if you attack the aliens, they're going to become aggressive to more humans, or all humans throughout the game. Uh, which leads to some cool, like, weird geopolitics where other civilizations will be like, Hey, I'm warning you, don't attack the aliens anymore. Like, they're wrecking my shit over here. You need to stop. But, on the other hand, it, you know, it goes the other way as well. If you're very uh, laissez-faire with the aliens and you kind of act like they don't exist, they're more likely to ignore you, uh, and you won't have to deal with as much of their bullshit in the future. So I'm just researching basic tech right now. There's a... It, it, you can tell that it's a, it's a huge tech tree here. Kind of set up in a radial system... Uh, a little bit similar to something like Endless Space, but I, I think I just go through the basic text. There were some games where I started to rush for uh, monuments. I'm not sure if this is actually one of them. I'm, I'm watching this back, you know, this is about a week after I played the game, I guess, so... Um, some of my memory on it is not necessarily 100% perfect, but... Uh, what turn are we even on here? We're on, like, turn 16. So we're starting to make a little bit of progress. It's unfortunate, 100 turns wasn't really enough to, you know, really effectively go to war with somebody and take over one of their cities. Maybe if you, like, really, really went militarily heavy, you could have done it. I got close sometimes, but I just didn't quite have the, uh, like, the meta, like, I didn't know which, um... Uh, which units were the best siege units for the early game. Anyway, we have our workers said doing, like, auto improvements here. I think I just bought a worker, uh, and I didn't comments about it, which is stupid, but, um, yeah, it, you know, in case something goes terribly wrong, you can do that. So this is the Virtue screen. The Virtues are basically like perks, so you see there was Might, Prosperity, and of course this is my fourth game of the day, so I'm like, I don't need to look at this stuff in more detail, no one else is ever going to see this, right? Um, but basically these are the same kind of perks that you can pick up in, uh, Civilization. I can't remember if they were called Virtues in Civilization as well, but I always like to go for, um, the plus 50% military right off the bat to make sure my units get more XP. Um, this is another thing that shows up a lot, is these quest decisions. So basically, this gives us a choice, usually of approving uh, one company to come to the planet. So what company do we want to sponsor? And usually it's like one of them will give us like plus one science if you get a trade route with them, or you'll get like plus one science every time a trade route completes. Uh, and one of them will be like, you know, plus one production every time your trade routes get completed. It really seems like trading is super important uh, in the game, and, and much simpler than something in like a Paradox game. Which, for some people, is going to be an annoying thing, because it's, you know, perhaps not as complex. You kind of just build like a caravan, and then send it and say like, okay, just constantly go back and forth. Uh, but much easier to understand as well. So this is a little bit of um, the diplomacy stuff here. You can see what you can do. Uh, I, I gave open borders there. One thing that's cool is that you can actually bank favors, and I'm not sure if that was added in a in a Civ 5 DLC because I don't think I played past uh, Gods and Kings, but or whatever the one before Gods and Kings was, I can't quite remember. But um, you can basically bank favors. So maybe I have a ton of production, and this guy doesn't have very much production, and he's not going to use it to go to war with me, or at least I'm confident of that. Then what I can do is say like, hey, you know what? Here's, uh, it's not production, sorry, here, energy. Here's 200 energy, but you owe me a favor. And then you can call in that favor, um, the next time you go into diplomatic negotiations, diplomatic negotiations. So you can say, like, okay, remember that time I gave you 200 energy? Well, maybe you could, uh, prepare for war with this person that is my enemy. Sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no. Again, with such a, kind of, like, limited experience as we had, I didn't get too much of a chance to really see um, how much you could kind of work the AI over. It seemed like within 100 turns, all of the AI was basically neutral to me. I had them a couple times be like, hey, please stop attacking the aliens. Um, but never a situation where they attacked me or anything like that. So this is my, um, this is my worker uh, just building a farm over here to give our city a little bit of extra food. And then I have what is basically a settler. Um, heading out here uh, with my soldiers as well. Now you might be noticing that there's some stuff on the ground there, um, like that green kind of cloudy stuff. Uh, this is Miasma, and what Miasma does is that it actually 
takes away uh, HP from a unit that stands on the tile. So every time they, they cross that tile, uh, they will actually have a, a little bit of HP take away, which actually makes a huge difference in strategic positioning for like military things in the early game. Because if you put yourself on top of a, a miasma, or well, I mean, you can have like other effects like mountains or hills or farmland, whatever, uh, under miasma. But if you go into a miasma tile and you start attacking aliens from there, they're going to have a huge advantage and it's just going to get better and better for them over time if you do that. Now, remember I talked about orbital units. There is a an orbital unit that you can send up and it can clear my asthma for you. So it looks like I'll be going engineering here, uh, which allows me to do some more basic building stuff, basically. Pretty important, I think, to get that uh, second city up as soon as possible, no matter what kind of victory you're going for. And we didn't learn too much about victory conditions or stuff like that. It seems like they want to, um, they want to keep some stuff a little, uh, hidden and secret here. So now there's a, another alien that I wanted to talk about that has just appeared. This is the thing that when we talked to the other media who were playing the game uh, after our, our long session for feedback and stuff like that, everyone was like, those guys are dicks. So again, in Civ 5, you know, you'll come across wild animals or barbarians or something like that and they're really annoying sometimes and sometimes they might snipe a unit of yours, but usually, you know, at least at the difficulty level I played as. If you played smart, you would either avoid them or just overwhelm them. These siege worms are huge, huge problems because they're actually super, super strong. Um, there, there's a, the kind of like FTL dis, uh, style decisions here which are going on right now. You can pause it and read this if you want to. But basically, like, you know, you can get uh, different effects, positive and negative, as a result of your decision. So you can gear your... Uh, your civilization or your conglomerate into being like a one that's focused on purity, like purifying the human race or something like that, or one that's focused on, um, you know, getting along with the alien life and, you know, preserving the, the validity of the alien life or something like that. Or one that's about superiority, you know, like conquering everything that you see through decisions like, hey, you accidentally discovered, like, that one of the plants that you brought up here that is very beneficial for you is colonizing the alien planet and taking over, like, outcompeting the alien fauna. Alien flora, I should say. Do you want to just let it run wild, even though it'll have consequences and totally disrupt the ecosystem, and that'll give you, like, plus one superiority? Or do you want to, um, you know, step in and say, like, this needs to be quarantined, let's try to live in balance with our environment. So there's cool stuff like that. It seems like there's a lot of different kind of spectrums to, to go down. Anyway. Um, to finish, I think this is where I try to negotiate to, like, start getting, uh... I, at this point, it's like my fourth game, and I'm like, okay, so I gotta go to war with somebody. I'm trying to see if maybe I can get a favor out of this, but... Yeah, those siege worms, they kind of, like, go around willy-nilly, like, um... I don't know why, I don't know why I gave them there, maybe just open borders. I, I did, looked away from the screen for a sec, because I was talking with my hands, but, uh... Yeah, the, these siege worms basically can destroy a city in like four or five hits and they kind of go around willy-nilly like not really that conscious at least that's the way it seems so far um and you can terrorize them if you want to you can you can attack them with units your units will die they'll die in one hit uh especially these early game units maybe when you get into the late game you can take them out more easily but they're a real danger for killing your city you can attack them with your city i actually did manage to kill one just with consistent bombardment but another thing that you can do is rush this technology that allows you to build uh basically like a force field around your city so no actual aliens can get within two tiles of your city and it seems like one viable strategy, and I don't want to talk necessarily about strategy too much because, uh, you know, it, it's very early on, and I'm not that good at Civ to begin with. I'm not the kind of guy who should be giving you, uh, you know, advice so you can play on Deity or something like that. But, uh, it seems like if you rush that force field, then you can live in harmony with the aliens because the aliens will no longer, you know, quote-unquote, accidentally wander into your city tiles and kill your workers, basically. Uh, another thing that I really like as a beginner is, um, you know, you have advisors... It's not like old SimCity where they actually give you tips, really. At least that's not the way it seems so far. Um, more like there's just going to be like an, an icon next to something. And it'll be like, your military advisor thinks you should research this. It also has a really good UI. Um, the same way that Civ 5 does or the same way that something like Warlock Masters of the Arcane does. Um, where basically it gives you a to-do list every turn. And once the things in your to-do list are done, you click next turn and you're good to go. So uh, once you get in the groove, you know, it's, it's Civ. One more turn, over and over and over, and, uh, you know, it's a cliche, but it really does hold true that, you know, we would find ourselves accidentally going past the 100 turn allotment, and people would be like, whoa, 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 how far did you get? Like, did you see anything that you shouldn't have seen? Uh, and if I did, would I tell you? Probably, but I didn't, because, you know, turn 106 versus turn 100 doesn't make that big of a difference. So this siege worm is getting a little too close for comfort here. 
It should go without saying as well that the presentation is really well done. You know, it, it still looks like Civ V. To me, that's not necessarily a bad thing, even though Civ V is, is kind of an old game. It, it looks worse on playback than it did in the moment. Oh my god, did this thing... It did destroy my farm. I'm just trying to check out the, the quest log on the right side. Yeah, so see, you can, this is uh, domesticate or um, eradicate wildlife. I chose domesticate to kind of be, you know, nice to the aliens. But yeah, the, the graphics and music are at the quality level you'd come to expect from Civ. But it, it does sort of feel like this is not Civ 6 in space. And it doesn't really feel like this is Civ 5 space edition. Or sorry, let me rephrase that. It doesn't feel like Civ 6, only this one's in space. And it doesn't feel like... A new Alpha Centauri, necessarily, um, just with kind of like the Civ underlay. It really feels like kind of like this is Civ 5, but in space, if that makes sense. I know that's kind of a confusing way of explaining it, but it seems like uh, an evolution of the existing formula. Nothing more drastic than that. Which, again, I think people are going to have uh, mixed feelings on, but knowing how popular Civ 5 is, I don't think people are going to be too disappointed. Uh, and I wasn't disappointed in my time with it either, and I, I much prefer the sci-fi aesthetic, because for the historical stuff, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but for the historical stuff, I oftentimes get into that, like, hardcore paradox mindset, where I'm like, I want something with historical accuracy, these paradox games have that. I know that's not for everybody, but that's kind of where I fall on it. I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of history, and, you know, in my leisure time, I'll read books about history, and, you know be a big nerd and study it and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of like to be like, well, what if we took over this as the serene doge of Pisa and tried to blah blah blah, like, you know, change history like that. So to have a more sandboxy strategy game, which is kind of like everyone starts, oh my god, did that kill my worker? Why am I so bad? This is, I should have rushed that electric fence, man, like I was talking about, but um, we'll bombard it a little bit. I don't think this is the video where I kill it, but you can see how little damage we do it. We do to it with the city bombardment. But yeah, but to have a, more, a game that's more, um, Almost like a board game, and it's more free and sandboxy, and it doesn't start from real historical conditions. I prefer that to be in, in space because, you know, they're not competing with the, the stuff that's more grounded in real history. So, and I know a lot of people prefer the sci-fi aesthetic. A lot of people probably prefer kind of like the historical aesthetic as well. But uh, I think there's going to be something for everybody here. Uh, if you're a fan of the Civ franchise, which uh, I imagine a lot of people watching this are. Now, um, you can see I just zoomed out here to show you like how large the tech tree can actually get. What's cool is that um, there are prerequisites, but it's almost like they're subdivided into categories. So you can't just like, day one, you can't just be like, I'm gonna research, I don't know, fucking, I'm just making something up here, but like a super hydro solar bomb that'll like wipe out my opponent's cities immediately. As much as that would be awesome. Um, you can't just go out and research that, even though it would have a science penalty associated with it, you can't. There's prerequisites you gotta hit first, but when you reach, like, a new tier of research, you can choose to go, like, wide or deep. You can get, like, the one thing that opens up the next, uh, track on pre of prerequisites, like, I think chemistry went into, like, terraforming there. Or you can go deeper within chemistry, and that will give you other advantages. So, you can pretty much spread out wide very, very early on, or you can go deep early on. There actually were a couple of games, like I said, where I was able to build wonders within the first 100 turns, which is, um, I, I guess not necessarily something that's super rare in uh, the Civ franchise, but you could also just go hardcore military and get, like, one extra military unit, uh, one extra level of military unit, I should say, you know? There's a, there's a trade-off, always. Music in particular has a really good sci-fi kind of uh, vibe to it, which, again, you shouldn't be surprised by. Again, the one thing I, I wished about the demo and you should be coming away with this knowing that I have positive impressions of this. Even if it's... It, the only thing that's underwhelming about it is that it's not an enormous change from the Civ formula. You know? It, it doesn't feel like the leap that Civ 4 to Civ 5 felt. Even though I, I hesitate saying stuff like that because I know that there are people out there that are going to be like, Why are you comparing Civ 4 to Civ 5? Civ 4 is still better. Or people that think Civ 2 is still better. Or people that are like, Why are you comparing Civ 5 to Civ 4? Civ 5 is way better than any other game that Civ franchised before. You know? Like, people... They have very strong opinions about these games. It's very civvy, let me just put it that way. And I don't think it's it's quite as committed or as deep into that sci-fi aesthetic and, and premise as maybe it might look like based on the premise of the game or the marketing materials or something like that. That being said, even though it feels basically just like a little bit more alien-y Civ, uh, it, it's a lot of fun and I, at least what we've played is, thus far has been a lot of fun. And I'm really interested uh, to, to get beyond turn 100, because seriously, like, we were not able to really do anything more than scratch the surface. 
We didn't really get to see it in depth in a diplomacy as a result of the fact that it ended so quickly. 100 turns seems like a lot, but man, it is, um... Oh, did I discover... I think I did discover an alien nest there. It would be pretty silly of me, in all likelihood, to, uh... Is it? I mean, it's not an alien nest. No, sorry, that was just a, a different mineral. That's the other thing, is that it's, it's weird to, like, just jump into this and be like, uh... You know, what's that? I don't know. Sure, let's build a city on top of it. Maybe that'll be important for something. Lots of, like, new varied resources and stuff like that. I, I've kind of forgotten what I was even trying to get at earlier. But let's just build this city up here. and Or the outpost, as they call it. And we'll have our third city. I think this is a game that I probably played most solidly, even though... Oh, that's the alien nest there. So they're kind of like, you know, the, the nests or the hives. I forget what they're called in Civ Five, where basically enemies will spawn out of. Uh, unless you take them down. So you want to take them down early if you want to take them down. Or if you want to be more, uh, you know, Dr. Doolittle-y. Uh, you want to, you know, just live in peace and harmony with the uh, with the natives. Now, uh, another thing that's cool is, you know, these flying units you can come across right off the bat that also... Uh, oh, do I just get killed here? Oh, thank God they live. Man, that nest is brutal. But, um... Yeah, uh, the the flying units, which can also attack you from over water. I, I can't remember how early you find flying units in Civ Five, but it certainly seems a lot later than uh, than I found them in uh, in this. There's all sorts of assholeish alien life, and this is kind of where I commit to like wiping out the aliens because as nice as it sounds to be like, hey, we're gonna be nice to the aliens and then they'll be nice to us back. Sometimes that doesn't fit into your plans because you need to build something. So see, see I, I clicked buy it too fast and I apologize for that. But again, I wasn't sure which one of these games was going to go up on YouTube. And I wanted to play more and get as far as I could every time. Um, but she was basically saying, we're distressed by the way you're treating the aliens. Like, this is a, basically an unofficial warning that if you keep treating them like that, our relations are going to suffer. And of course, that will be dictated by how their ideology is as well. You know, if they want to live in peace and harmony, they're going to be more likely to do something like that. But there will presumably be other nations that are more militaristic and also have kind of like a conquering kind of mindset when it comes to uh, to dealing with the aliens. So, I mean, we're not done with the uh, with the preview here yet. And you should take it as a preview. And everything that comes out of this event, take as a preview. Again, um, I already, you know, disclosed the fact that, of course, this coverage was basically, in a way, paid for by 2K because they took us out here to actually play the game and it, you know they didn't send us copies of the game to play at home we played on ideal pcs with you know people around that we could ask for help and stuff like that and the capture software worked fantastically and and that's all great um but do keep in mind that we play these in ideal uh conditions and uh you know preview events review events um i think probably have a tendency to give a little bit more favorable of an impression of the game uh than than you might otherwise have all other things being equal that being said i'm really looking forward to playing more civ beyond earth it doesn't necessarily have... It, it's weird, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to try to come up with a, an analogy that I think might make sense here. It's like when you were like a kid, you're like 12 years old and you see like a really... A girl with like blue hair or something like that, and you're like, oh, that's so cool. Blue hair, isn't that neat? That's kind of how I felt when I saw Beyond Earth. I was like, oh... They're doing a, a strategy game kind of with the Civ formula in space this time with a much more sci-fi aesthetic. That's that's kind of neat, right? It is. But then you find out that the quirkiness is not really, or the, the uniqueness is not really what drives it. Maybe later you find out, wow, she's really responsible and good with money. She would make a good life partner or something like that. You know, the novelty of the gimmick wears off, but having played it for five hours and realizing that it's quote-unquote just a sci-fi-ish Civ 5 with some other alterations. Um, I'm In a weird way, I'm more realistically excited to play it because I know that Civ 5 is a super great game and um, I, I'm a sucker for the sci-fi aesthetic as well. I hope that analogy makes sense and didn't complicate things. I always want those to be more relatable than just my, uh, my standard rambling. But yeah, uh, the unfortunate thing is, you know, only seeing the first 100 turns means you're not going to see too much, you know, in-depth combat, stuff like that. Um, really, this is just background footage for me to talk over and uh, talk about my impressions with the game. Pretty much everybody, uh, all the media I watch, the people, some people play through a whole 100 turn session themselves. Um, pretty much all of the same experience. You know, found as many cities as you can, try not to lose too many units to the... Um, to the aliens, try not to lose any cities to the siege worms. Which again, you are going to be seeing here, I think I actually do kill one. But I'm just doing some exploration and kind of going for, like, expansion on this one. Uh, to have three cities this early seems fairly good, although the health has suffered fairly drastically as a result. Uh, being on such good terms, I couldn't help but notice you become friends with Paul Australia. I have done the same thing. Uh, yeah, so they basically offered a, like, cooperation agreement, I think. Um, 
And you can see the whole diplomacy menu there, and we can talk to them if we want to, or we can choose not to. There's full voice work and stuff like that. You can see a detailed, basically, like, pros and cons list of why people like you, why people don't like you, and etc, etc. Voice work seems good, people talk in, I don't want to say their native languages, because some of them are from, uh, you know, amalgams of countries, or, you know, continents even. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? The other thing I wanted to talk about is that there is a little bit more of a objective-driven game compared to, uh, well, when I, when I boot up Civ Five and I play, I want to conquer everybody, or I want to win by a culture victory or something like that, right? I just want to subjugate everybody else in some way or another by being superior at science, or by having the biggest cannons, etc, etc. Um, in this, there's almost like a quest system, um, which you can see as I, um, and also, I'm so used to Paradox games that somebody turning down an alliance when I feel like I'm the most powerful player on the board, I'm like, what, dude? What are you smoking over there in Australia? Anyway, um, yeah, there's a, there's a quest system, and that's what those exclamation points are on the right side of the screen, and I might be forgetting that these were something in Civ 5, uh, but it does give you a kind of uh, guideline for what you should be doing to, to complete stuff, and you get rewards for completing quests, so... Oh, man, can we kill it on the next turn? It's probably two or three turns away still. Um, and my asthma hurt me there, too. Oh, you know what? I, this is actually a weird thing to have on camera here. I think I encountered, like, a weird glitch where I was, like, about to attack the sandworm, and then um, it, it took my focus away to another unit, and I had to, like... Uh, issue, yeah, like that, that arrow basically got stuck on the screen. Again, it, it's a work in progress, the game doesn't come out for another month or so, it was also an, an extremely minor issue, and uh, we did have the occasional crash as well, um, and multiplayer wasn't available in the build that we had, but presumably that's all stuff that uh, we've been told is going to get ironed out as the uh, game proceeds, and as you can see, I can continue to attack the sandworm there, um, now that that has been sorted out. Just a mild annoyance. Um, and all crashes happen like in the initial loading screen. It wasn't like you'd get 50 turns into a game, then it would crash and you didn't save, and you're like, oh, still frustrating. I'm not trying to say that it's not frustrating, but, uh, you know, compared to what it could have been, could have been worse, basically. Um, but yeah, the, the quests are, um, are nice as well. Sorry, the exclamation points aren't the quests. They're just kind of like alerts that you should know about. But there is a quest journal that I think you can open with a J key, and that'll be like, one of our quests, for example, is kill a sandworm. I forget what our, uh, what our reward is for that, but one of our other quests was just found a second outpost, and when you found the second outpost, uh, you get a free soldier unit, which actually means that as soon as you put down that second city, you already have another uh, unit policing it, basically, which is cool. Or you have another unit that you could use to rush uh, a civilization that just popped its pod down. So it seems like, you know, in a way, I'm kind of previewing Civ Five here, which is a little weird. Um, and, and I almost feel like, in a way, this video might come off as more negative than I mean it to be. But I think that might be due to expectations of the game as they are, you know? First trailer for the game, amazing. And, uh, really kind of set the tone that this was gonna be a very sci-fi heavy game. Not that it's not a sci-fi heavy game, like it's a very sci-fi heavy game. Um, but it, it seems like an evolution of the Civ formula as opposed to a revolution. I know it's a cliche uh, that I've used a couple of times, but I'm gonna use it again. If you don't mind, please tell me I don't declare war on somebody. That seems risky. See, I got a favor. I talked about the favor system earlier. She won't give me an alliance because we don't have a cooperation agreement yet. Can I get a cooperation agreement? Um, I think maybe at this point I just decide, like, screw it. Oh, no, I, I asked them to declare war on uh, them in ten turns. Uh, or maybe I just decide no. Um, cool, goodbye. Yeah, again, I didn't see too much of the diplomacy. But yeah, um... It's good, but it's more Civ. So if you if you were expecting a complete revolution of the formula, that may be in the final version, but it wasn't really in the version that we played. If you are totally fine with uh, more Civ, just with a little bit of a sci-fi flair to it, you're very much in luck. The game comes out pretty soon, and I think you're going to be very excited. This is something that I could definitely see uh, sucking my time away. For uh, man, we killed a worm. What did we get as a reward there? Maybe uh, come on past Northern Lion. Why don't you click on the uh, is it a free worker? Is that what I got? Or did I just free my worker there because I was actually, like, keeping them in the city to protect them? I think that might have been it. Anyway, um, yes, uh, if you're okay with just more Civ but with a little bit more of a sci-fi kind of uh, tone to it, then, then you're in luck. It comes out soon. I could see this sucking up a lot of time for me uh, in September or October. Sorry, when it actually comes out. Um, especially as I, like, 
you know, the, the Paradox stuff I've been loving, but I've been playing EU4 and CK2 for so long that I'm kind of open for a road that pulls me back into the Civ stuff uh, for a little while at least. If only so I can relate to the posts on r slash gaming. Uh, they'll probably be like, look at this scumbag, they want a cooperation agreement and me to give them a free solar collector or something like that. But yeah, this is weird. We're just gonna let the time kind of tick down here and see if anything in particular happens. Again, like, I can't really press diplomacy too much because we didn't have time to, uh, really, uh, pull anybody, like, over to our side or alienate somebody willfully. And you can see these siege worms being total pains in the ass. I wish I talked a little bit more about the tech tree more in depth or production more in depth or something like that. Uh, but again, that's stuff that maybe other players might be more qualified to talk about. The way I play Civ is kind of like the way when you play a board game for like the first time you just do whatever you think is best and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't i perpetually say uh, stay in that state because i i'm a slow learner when it comes to stuff like this but we are um we're only on turn 76 but uh i think we're actually going to end the episode soon because the video ends soon and uh I think that's because I rage quit because one of those alien worms is destroying my cities. And I think, oh, you know what it was? At this point, I was like, okay, I've got military down. If I restart at, like, turn 80 and start from turn 0, I could totally take over a city. But, yeah, um, that's going to take us to the end, then. This is uh, Civ Beyond Earth. Comes out a little bit later this fall. I'm excited for it. If you like Civ, I think you should be excited for it as well. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Maybe not quite the revolution that some people might be um, kind of thinking that it is, but uh, more Civ in space is fine by me. Is Civ in space fine by you? Yes? Well, consider checking it out when it comes out. I'm sure you know how. No? Well, then this is super not the game for you, but thanks for watching anyway. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.